What makes us all unique? We're celebrating diversity, emotions, and friendships on Cartoon Academy. There are things that make us the same. There are also things that make us all different. Well, florps are the same way. They're imaginary creatures, but they have different variables. Variables are the things that change. We're going to learn how to draw three different florps of all different shapes, sizes, and patterns. Let's draw. We're going to begin with the eyes. Now, all of our florps have eyes, but sometimes they're different shapes or even different numbers. This one has two eyes, a circle, and a letter C backwards. This florp has heavy eyelids, so we draw a line across. Now we add the pupils, one here and one here. Next are the eyebrows. We just sort of scribble those lines in. On top of his head, he has a little fluff of hair. Just a nice scribbly little line and then in the opposite direction. Now for the mouth. They're all pretty happy, so he's smiling. Dash, over, and dash. This florp has three sharp teeth. Letter V upside down. One, two, and three. Now for the body. It's sort of a rectangular shape. We start up here, right where we left off with the hair, and come down. Same thing on the other side. Line down. You can see how it starts to form a rectangle. For his feet, he has tentacles like an octopus. Out, point, and in. Same thing on the other side. Out, point, and in. Again, out, point, and in, out, point, and up. We're going to give it horns. Out, up to a point, and back in. Same thing on the other side. Out, up a point, and in. Now we're going to add a pattern. In this case, we're going to add stripes onto the tentacles. Just simple lines. Now we're going to add a polka dot pattern onto the body. When you're creating florps, you can add just about any kind of pattern you like. It could be stripes, or zigzags, polka dots, checkers, Whatever you want, it's your creation. So there is our first floor. Our second one, we're going to start with the eyes, but again, this is a variable. So we're going to change it. We're going to give this floor just one eye. It looks like this, a circle. This is a short floor. So he's looking up at his friend. He also has very bushy eyebrows. So we just scribble those lines around. around. Now for the mouth. The mouth is open. We come around, over and up, with sort of a hot dog shape. And one square little tooth. Now we fill that all in. body is much shorter. So we're going to come out, and instead of tentacles, it just has sort of like slime that oozes along. Take it down on the other side. This florp also has two horns, but they're a little more rounded. One, two, and 
too. It also has one little feather sticking off of the top of its head, like that. Let's draw one more floor. This is a very tall, slender one. This floor has three eyes. So we start in the middle. A circle. Another circle. And a third circle. Next are our pupils, the little dots in the eyes. One, two, three. We're going to add eyelashes. One, two, and three. Her eyebrows are very similar to our second Forbes eyebrows. Very bushy. Now for the body. Again, this character is tall and slender. So we come down and down. Again, a rectangular shape. Now for the mouth. Dash, a letter U, and a dash. She's smiling, but we don't see any of the teeth this time. And a dash underneath. Now for the legs, again, we're going to add tentacles, but they're a bit longer. One. And two. We're going to add two more that are in the background. Line up and connect, and then a little litter V sticking out the side. Same thing on the other side. Up, connect, V. For the pattern, we're going to use zigzags. It's like drawing the letter W over and over. All the way down. On the tentacles, we'll add stripes. It doesn't matter how many, it's whatever looks right to you. And there are your florps. Let's take a look at our florps and think about the things that make them similar or the same. They all have a very similar shape, sort of rectangular. They all have eyes. And they all have a little fluff of hair, either with their eyebrows or the hair on top of their head. Think about the things that make them different. There are different body shapes. They have different teeth, different numbers of eyes, and different patterns. It's one of the things that makes it so much fun to draw because there's so much diversity. They're all different. And that's something to celebrate, our differences. And it's one of the things that makes it so much fun to draw florps. Be sure to sign your name. Take pride in your work. What makes a really great friendship? Well, one of the things that makes a great friendship is helping each other. We're going to draw a symbiotic relationship. This is the kind of relationship where two or more animals help each other out. In this case, a rhino and a few of his bird friends. Let's draw. We begin with the eyes. Oval. And a letter C backwards. The pupils. One, two. The eyebrows. One, two, three little dashes. One, two, three. Now for the snout and horn. A line down. And then we're going to add the horn. When drawing a rhinoceros' horn, it's best to come right to the point. Up, point, and down. The lip is a line down and then up with a bend. Over, up, and a letter C backwards to 
form the cheek. The lower jaw is a letter V, and then a slightly larger letter V, like so. Draw the tongue inside the mouth with a curved line. Fill in around it. Now we add a nostril. It's an upside down letter U and a little dash. Now we're gonna add some shading to the horn. Whenever you add shading, you think about where your light source is coming from. In this case, we're gonna imagine the sun is up here. So that means shadows would fall to the left side. We'll just do some line shading. A few quick little lines on the back side of the horn. We then come up, arch, down, and we're going to add the ear. Out, point, in, and stop. Now for the interior or inside of the ear. Out, point, and in. Now for the back of our rhinoceros. Bring a line down, out, up slightly, around and down, right to there where we're gonna put the leg. Now we're gonna start from the other direction for the front of the rhino. A line down, and then we're gonna add the first leg. We start with a letter V, down, out slightly, in, up, and around. The hind leg is very similar. We come out, in slightly, up, add a line. A curved line across the belly. Now for the other legs. Down, out, in, down, out, and in. Toenails, we just use the letter M. Letter M, letter M, letter M, and one more time. Now for the tail. Out, point, up, and in and then a little floof here on the end. We're going to add some wrinkles on the knees. The wrinkles on the knees are just letter E's. Letter E, letter E. Right behind here, we see one more ear sort of sticking up in the back. There's our rhino. Now we're going to give him his bird friends. Now the birds provide a symbiotic relationship, helping the rhino by picking off little bugs and ticks and other parasites. So it helps them out. It can also use its call to alert the rhinoceros whenever danger is approaching. We're gonna start with a bird right here on the back. Circle. Letter C. Period and period. The beak is a letter V turned on its side that we then stretch out and then a bring a line to cap off the end. For the head, just a couple little feathers. Looks like a letter W. Add one more and in. A line down, out, Letter D forms a wing. Bring down the body, round and up. Letter U, up into the neck. And then another letter D for the wing. He's just sort of sitting on the back side there. So we draw a line down, and then a letter V for the feet. Out, down, letter V. The tail feathers just sort of take a letter M on its side and stretch it out. 
Now we add eyebrows. One, two. That's our first bird. Let's give him another friend too. Circle. Letter C. Period and period. The beak. And up. Again, the feathers on the side of the head. Come down, down, around, and up with a letter U. And the wings again are a letter D. For the legs and feet, line down, letter V, down, letter V. There's another wing sticking out here and then eyebrows. I'm gonna add a couple little hairs on top of the head. Now that may seem like a minor thing, but actually there's a really good reason I'm doing that. I'm trying to create a balanced image. So I want things to be the same sort of height across the image. This is called scale, the size of things. So if you look at the size of the birds and the size of the rhino, there's a big difference. But I want it to all sort of line up and be even. So across the top now, you'll see that the hair lines up with the top of the birds. We're now gonna add our setting. Setting is where or when a story takes place. We're just gonna add some ground surface. Notice the back and forth or texture of the line. Now let's add some tall grass. Up, down, up, down, up, and back in. Same thing on the other side. This is to help balance the drawing. Up, down, up, down, up, and down. There's our rhinoceros and his best friends. Be sure to sign your name, take pride in your work. How do you feel about drawing? Today we're gonna draw our feelings on Cartoon Academy. Emotions are how we feel. Happy, sad, angry are all examples of emotions. There are lots of different ways to show your emotion. If you're happy, you might laugh. If you're sad, you might cry. When you're angry, you may yell. In cartoons, we show our emotions through facial expression, primarily through the eyes, eyebrows, and mouth. We're gonna draw a bunch of different emotions starting right now. Let's draw. We're going to start with the eyes. An oval. And another oval. Next to the pupils. One. Two. Whenever I'm drawing a happy emotion, I think of the word uplifting. And everything sort of lifts up. The eyebrows are raised. And the mouth lifts at the corner. Dash. Over. Dash. Dash. Happy. Start with a slightly tilted oval. Sad is the opposite of happy. If happy is uplifting and everything lifts upward, in sad, everything pushes down. So notice the angle of the eyes. The 
pupils look downward too. The eyebrows push down. And the quarters of the mouth are downward as well. Line, dash, dash. Sad. Think about how your face looks when you feel angry. Your eyebrows push down. Your mouth sort of frowns a little bit. That's what we want to capture when we draw a character that's angry. So we'll start with the eyebrows. A few dark lines. And a few more. A letter U shape. And again. Pupils are drawn inward. Now for the mouth. A line across and down, over and up. We want to draw him gritting his teeth. So a line across and then one, two, three, four, five, angry. An oval. And another oval. He's looking slightly off to the side. And the eyebrows are bent in concern. The mouth has a slight frown to it. A dash. Worried. Hysterical can have two different meanings. So we're going to do two different drawings. Something can be so hysterical that it makes you laugh. Or you can cry hysterically. Basically, hysterical means losing control. We're going to start with laughing at something very, very funny. Or sort of an arrow shape. And then flip it and reverse it on the other side. The eyebrows are raised up high. And now for the mouth. Remember, he's laughing. Dash, over, dash. Line down, over, and up. We see his teeth, a line across the top. We also see the tongue. It's a letter U shape, upside down, with a dash. We're then going to color in all of this around the tongue and below the teeth. A dash underneath. And then one, two, three, and four. There's our character laughing. He might be laughing so hard that he cries. So we had a couple teardrops. A character might also cry hysterically, and the emotions are very similar in the way that they look. So we'll start with the eyes. Very similar to our other character. The eyebrows are raised once again. And the main difference is in how we draw the mouth. Line arching over, over, and up. We have the teeth in again, with a line across, and the tongue. Arch up and back, and a line down the middle. Again, we fill in all around here. Got the teeth. 
and a dash. Lastly, just like the one that was laughing, we add tears. Hysterical. Drawing is a good way to share and express your emotions. I hope you feel great about all the drawings you did today. I'd like to share one more emotion with you, and that's pride. So sign your name. Take pride in your work. This has been Cartoon Academy. Thanks for tuning in.